Hello and welcome to another Mass Debate video. Um, as you may have seen before we recorded this on the 22nd of June, Talk Sport will talk about how West Ham could break into the top four. Now, while we're going to not quite talk top four, let's rate it back to the top six. Chelsea and Arsenal, of course, look the most vulnerable of the sides to drop out. And of course, Manchester United, perhaps the big favourites to finish seventh if one team does. So we're here to discuss if West Ham can realistically, potentially, finish in the top six. Does anyone want to kick it off and give their reasons why or why not we may finish in top six? No. no. We can't. Or you don't want to kick it off? This team's better than us. Who? Everton, uh, Wolves, Okay, Leicester. okay. Do you think someone might break the top six? Yeah, I six? do think they will. I think there is an opportunity. Um, I think that's abundantly clear. Uh, not only Man United, but Chelsea and Arsenal all look suspect. I think Arsenal will step up again this year. But Man United are a complete unknown and Chelsea depends highly on their manager but the teams around us I think are better placed than us to step into that position there's a chance obviously we, especially if we beat those teams around us then all of a sudden we look like we could do it but I highly doubt we're going to be able to put that many wins against the people around us to be able to make it it's there for the taking it is there for the taking I think it's the first season in five that Liverpool and Man City are far better than the rest and the situation is with the next four I think there are teams that could break in I think, I, I think Spurs are comfortable I think Spurs are comfy top four I don't I think they're, they're, they're going to lose Ericsson this year yeah I think they'll replace him though I think, I think Spurs are now starting to feel the the benefit of the move of the studio. I think they've got a bit of a transfer in Katie, not loads, but I think they've got enough to get through I, I things. Think, I think if you were to ask as many football fans as you wanted, who will get first, the majority of people would say Spurs without yeah. being sent to I think the other three are all, Man United are a mess, at the time of recording they're a mess, they don't know who they want, and when they do decide who they want, they can't get in. Um, smaller clubs, us, Palace, Leicester will offend the Man United off, that's something I've never experienced before in my lifetime, I've never experienced that. Arsenal at the start of the season last season looked good but then when they got found out a little bit they got found out thank and you then, um, there. that's lovely thank you girl. cheers thank you. get top six we've got top eight here boys <laughs> then um top eight would you take top eight I would take top ten in all honesty yeah. I would take top ten but <laughs> we're trying to do top six for this for the debate if you like I agree with Charlie, someone's getting in there. I, I think someone this season's going to fall short. Yeah, someone is, but it's all about keeping our players fit as well at the same time. I think our squad is key to getting into that top six. Like, for example, if he stays fit, along with Declan Rice, I think our midfield won't get overrun like it does in few years. And that's where we struggle. And I think that could be the difference. Jack Wilshere could be the difference. I, know, I probably will get stick for this, but I'm, if we have a full season of Jack Wilshere, I think things could progress. And not only that, Fournals has got an amazing injury. I think he missed, what, like two, three games last year? And he wasn't missing games before that, which is a rarity for us. So if, again, we keep someone like Wilshere, then all of a sudden we've got options to play in different games and different roles. That's, yeah, that's what I mean. We've, now we've, we've got the back in, uh, we're getting... We're buying the players in, we're getting obviously the back cuts. So, it all like I said, it all depends on keeping the squad fit. Hush. Shout loud, <laughs> shout loud. They're whooping because they think West Ham can get in the top six. They see the Jaegers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we will. Yeah. We've got every potential to. I, I just, Why? Like you said, Why? Again, because there's better teams than us. And I think every season we seem to think. Yeah, I think we can challenge for Europe in general. But you say better teams, do you mean the top six in a close shot? Or do you think if someone gets in there, it's going to be Wolves, Everton or Leicester? Again, like the likes of Everton, I know Wolves have got Europe, so they're not going to be as good as last year, but I still think they're a good enough team to... I think we'll be on par with Wolves, so I think again it could be between us and Wolves that could get the European place. I still think the top six will probably still finish top six, even though they're going to be a lot worse. I just think that gap between, because there's like two separate leagues in there, you've got like the top six, top seven, then there's a gap, then you've got the rest of it. I just think that gap's going to close a little bit, but it probably won't change much. I think it has changed. I think it changed when Leicester hired Rodgers. 
when Pellegrini got a full season under his belt and players have come back from injury. I think Everton and Silva has got used to Everton. The start of the season, people were talking about sacking Silva. He's now got to grasps with his team, etc. The three managers have just said, oh no, they're best 11 going into next season, I think, which they didn't. Rodgers wasn't even at uh, Leicester. Wolves is a complete... I don't know how to describe it. It's an unknown factor. They've got you to be good <laughs> next year, so that's completely like. They could also go yeah. spend massive in the summer. They could finish sixth, yeah. but they could finish sixteenth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think they've got such a big range of. As much as I agree with you, I think the difference isn't necessarily because we've hired good managers and had good leaders. I think if Solskjaer was doing bits at United, Chelsea weren't in disarray. I don't know if we're having this conversation at all. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, then Solskjaer, I, I think, is still kind of an unknown quantity, to I be agree. honest. As much as he could, in the same way that you could say Leicester, uh, sorry, Wolves could finish sixth or they could finish 16th, I think Man United could conceivably have an incredible season. Charlie just touched on it there, and I think what's important is Charlie said Man United could finish between third and seventh, so it's like a range to me. And he's right, Man United could finish between third and seventh, whereas West Ham's is probably, I don't know, fifth and twelfth or something, and that's the difference. So I think we need Man United to finish low and us to finish high. I think it's possible this season. I think there could be someone that drops out of top six and opportunities there. The difference between us, Wolves and Leicester, Everton are having to spend 25 million to keep their midfield the same as last season by getting Gomez. Leicester haven't got him yet, but they're going to have to spend 40 million to get Tealsmans in, which keeps their midfield the same as last season. Yeah, we spent don't, 25. Don't we say the same thing every year about Everton? Oh, we've got to watch Everton. We got, and they don't ever really do nothing. They did, like, well, they did well last yeah. season. What, are they in Europe? No, they finished eight. I know, but like you can't fear teams like Everton. You have to just get you out of them. You have to go for them. Yeah, yeah. like Leicester, Wolves, Everton. Get out. They're the team you have to fear them. Beat. I respect them. I don't fear them. No, no, no. no I know, but as a club, look, we can't think that Everton are going to do better than them. But we have to get out teams yeah. like that. They're the points that That's, we need. If we want to get into break into yeah. the top six, that is what we have to do. Yeah. We have to beat the teams we should be doing. Yeah, it's nice to beat the teams like the Man United, the Tottenham's, but we don't. We're not doing it the right way. No, 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 well, not. the thing is, right? Last season we could have got seven, but we bottled it several times. In the yeah. Way. Now I'm not going to say we bottled seven, but we definitely bottled the game. We blocked on it, and that's fine. That is what it is. I have more confidence this year that we will be better than we were last. I in hope, those games yeah. and in general as well. And that means if one of those teams do drop out, that gives us a big chance because the other teams around us, like you say, Everton are spending big to stay the same. Mm. Leicester are going to have to stay big to stay the same. That doesn't mean they couldn't go and find someone for 10 mil to do two months job and he nails it, but that's less likely and they might look like they're trying to get two months. Whereas we are, in, we are getting better this summer. That's what I mean. We aren't, gonna, we aren't staying the same. We aren't spending a lot of money to stay the same. We are improving our squads. Adding to that as well, last season was Pellegrini's first season. Hopefully we can go into the new season and look at it as a learning curve. What, what to expect more into next year. Like we're, we're bringing in the players still, we're still obviously that four nils. I don't know much about him, but he seems yeah, 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 and he's good. talked a lot about. So hopefully it's a learning curve, and we improve. Like you say, like we beat yeah. the teams around us, and not bottling to get into that top six, seven. I, I, I think Silver gets sacked next year. I've heard other people say it. I You're think he will person. because I don't think that Everton again will not make Europe again, and as a club they expect that. That's, yeah, they have higher so, expectations uh, for managers than me. I just don't think, I, I think I can see him going. And do you know what? I could see him going before Christmas. Yeah. The, team to, the team to look at next year is Wolves. They've got your League your, your football next year. How are they going to deal with that as well? Do you think their squad's big enough to do a Europe League? I mean. like, how are they going to cope, especially with the competitions yeah. like the FA Cup as well? Coming on to that, so that could be. I mean, they're a good yeah. side. I'm not going to say oh, they're, 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 they're a good side, but I think they'll struggle. You need strength and depth to yeah. be in the Europe. They're right. not a deep side. Last year they didn't use that many players. I don't remember it. I, at least off the top of my head, I can't remember. Not Sixteen. It wasn't a lot. No, it wasn't a lot. That's that's a that's a first day. That's a that's I a think match that's day squad. That's it. To do. I agree. I, I, I think agree. Last season they probably used a lot of squad player for eight injuries. Yeah. Yeah. How good he just not doing. You know, the first Chris four well, games we lost well, because yeah. you didn't know his centre backs. Yeah. Diop or Bonner, Diop, Babuena, yeah. Babuena, Diop, he's changed them. He knows his centre backs now. He'll know that he'll probably, we'll probably see Frederick start more games next season. Yeah. Last season was chop and change, left backs chop and change. Yeah, I think mean, this season yeah. he out has 
an 11 in his head going into the start of the season he thinks if it runs fit this is what I'm going to play in the first game we need a bit of luck we need a bit of luck we need yeah, to well, luck is due our way yeah, do you think, do you think VAR is going to help us yes I, 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 think, I, so. I think so I, and, and this is another reason why oh, sorry it's another reason why I think the top six will change, change. because I feel Absolutely, like yeah. they're, they're more of their points yeah. it, will go, it will go in favour of the lower league clubs it has to like, it was on Twitter I saw a stat that like, we'd be something I think it was like 18 points better yeah. off with VAR in place it's crazy and, we would have been in that top four. Top look, five, look at the yeah. Leicester game last year, right? We we weren't given that goal. Then they went ahead and scored. Yeah. Two, I mean, that, that's three that, that's three points instead of one point straight away. I think there was a game before that as well. I can't think of Liverpool. That we there was like three out of the five five or six fixtures. We could have had like nine points when like also that Man United game as well. Yeah, the only problem is the only problem with VAR is every cover we've seen the same. Yeah, yeah. if you ask a Man United fan, they will pick out fixtures where they got done. Even I think the only club you can't really say it to is Liverpool. I think they were the ones that really benefited from official decisions. But apart well, from that, but we're never going to catch Liverpool even with VAR. They're yeah, still going to be like well ahead of us. On the flip side as well with that, there's, it's not just with VAR, it's not just going to be off sides, it's not going to be like I said on the train, it's not going to be black and white. You're going to have other things where it's going to be 50 50 decisions as well, and I still think they're still going to go in the way of the bigger teams, like with handballs. Well, we've seen it, we've seen, we've seen it, we've seen it this summer, Women's World Cup, Euro Championships, and the 21s, you've still seen referees make skeptical decisions, even looking at the screen, watching the replays, you're still sort of like room for favouritism if yeah. you like yeah. Yeah. Um, listen there's, there's going to be it's, there's going to be ups and downsides to everything but I think it's needed I think it's very much needed especially in the circumstances last year we got so many decisions were, went against us that should have gone for us and we'd have been better off that's not only for us as well it's for the other teams as well so <laughs> yeah I think it's needed that is yeah. What's the biggest factors for you in terms of reaching top six that's going to be different to last season? I know yours is injuries, I'm yeah. not sure particularly, but then you've got Yarmolenko, Sanchez, Lanzini. But let's be real, it could boil down to whichever one of our teams, if someone does drop out, it could just boil down to injuries, like you say. Whichever one of us has the least injuries, it could just walk into that space, just because they've got their first team available every single game. Or the vast majority That's of games. I mean. with, the, with the team we have on paper, with no injuries, there's no reason why we shouldn't be going for that top six, seven. There was no reason why we should. I think our first team, obviously, there's weaknesses we can all pinpoint. But oh, I think yeah. by and large, you would say it's just as good as the others. Yeah, the, the, teams, the teams around us, being be. Everton, Leicester, those ones. Like obviously, we can all go. Oh, our left back's probably not as good. Our full back combination probably isn't as good. Our goalkeeper might be slightly better. Or whatever. We can all pinpoint the individuals. But as a solid unit, if you just picked eleven people, you'd probably say, okay, that's in or around as good ability-wise as the people around us. Who, like, who but, out of all of the top six, who or okay, top eight on paper and on our day, who do you think we're not good enough against? Going for obviously well, Man's, Man City wise. Yeah, I mean Man City. You know, they've got strength and depth. You know, I, I can't see us being above them. I, I can't see us with Liverpool. Yeah. I, I think they're both better sides. But who would you say next down? Would who, who on top, paper top four easy? Which um, are, so it'd be Man City, Man City, less Liverpool, obviously Arsenal probably a better than us. Uh, Chelsea are better than us. Tottenham better than us. Uh, I forget the top six. I forget. Man United. Yay! <laughs> Man United better than us. Oh. <laughs> Took him ages to say that. I know. Bro, I, was, I, was, I, was, I had five in my hand and I was like, there is someone else I'm forgetting. <laughs> the thing is, though, but that's what I mean. Like, Everton, Leicester. Everton, Leicester, Wolves, we're all very similar. Yeah, Wolves I agree. Are maybe, maybe, Wolves are maybe have overall better team, but that's only because they have only 11 players. I be, I, we shouldn't fear them. To no, we shouldn't. shouldn't. fear them. I think we're better than yeah, Leicester do. and Everton, I personally. Do, yeah. On paper. I do. Not on, but we don't seem to do it on the field. The thing is, is this, well, this season as well, we've, so we've only made... By the, end, by the time the football season starts, we'll probably only make what, two new players to the squad, probably, as opposed to we had clearing up a whole new squad with a new manager. Yeah. We've built, we're not going to have the same, well, hopefully, we're not going to have the same four 
like game start that we had last season where it was just losing heavily. Yeah. So I think we're only get, we're going to get better than last season. Yeah? We're more settled. Just how, yeah, we're exactly. We're more settled. We have to be more settled everywhere. We have to be. You've got less people moaning about the stadium. A bit more positivity. Don't know if you've seen that already. Well, yeah, I know, but I'm just saying. Like, but I know, but, but I nearly fucking fell asleep. That's the problem. It's fucking like, I'm, I'm, I'm bored of that shit. I don't though. think that helps the players. No, it either. doesn't. It doesn't help the, the, you know, the surroundings of the club, personally. Yeah. Um, Wolfie said about injuries. One thing we fucking do need to be is a bit more fucking positive about fucking things. Do you know what I mean? Like, surely that does, like count for something like I don't know last season we're still walking into the ground and everyone's like oh it's fucking shit fuck off then if you don't want to be here fuck off like do you know what I mean all of that just doesn't help yeah it ain't going to be Upton Park it is a new fucking stadium but we need to get a grip let's just get on with it let's just be positive like the team still needs your support we do they do that's, that's what I think I think some fans are holding us down as a of course they are do you know what I mean? for when we can progress as to how we can none progress none of us wanted this we, we all know that yeah. we've been talking about it for the last fucking three years and I'm getting so fucking bored of it I think like, we just we, we know we all know we're not going back we no, can't go yeah. back it's not possible no. we need to move on yeah. we need to forget the past is past great yeah. it's a memory that, that, we, yeah. that will live with us but now we're looking to the future yeah. it's now time to move on yeah. and it has to we have to move on I think, I think I agree with you completely I think there's so many factors in favour of West Ham for next season you know as much as we played as I was saying last year we said they've got this and that and this and that I don't think any other club has as many positive stuff as we do at the minute. You know, the fans are getting used to the stadium, but not only that, the London Stadium is a hard place to come in 2019. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. From Christmas yeah. onwards, that, I'm not saying it was a fortress, but it was a downside better than we've had there. Uh, when I did a cup of tea with Gonzo the other uh, week, I said to Gonzo, when Man City got West Ham away in the first game, I bet their fans looked at that and went, yeah, I'd rather not have that game. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have another. Not only that, you can't get past Stratford oh, Station without being attacked. That's why it's so. That's for home fans. That's, 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 that's why it's so hard to come in. Well, like, first game, yeah. questions will be asked. Could they have a hangover from last season? It's, well, it's also, it's also their players. They their players fully played, yeah. Yeah. Their players have been playing in the UEFA Nations League and stuff yeah. and have a short summer. We only had Rice, uh, Anatovic, and Fabianski, <laughs> and Buena, and Copa America. But Pellegrini now knows his best life. I think Pellegrini now knows his formation, which I think is more important because last season it felt like he kept changing formation yeah. as well. He always played flat back four, but midfield has always seemed to have a different role. 4-2-3-1, 4-3-3, 4-4-2. I think he only knows this is my yeah. formation I'm going to fit players in I think that's why I've got Fernandes I think he's thought you know what that's the guy that fits the formation yeah. I, want. Yeah. I think that's why he's going for Maxi Gomez that's the guy that fits the way I want to play and the only one who I would say is probably as settled as that is Nuno at Wolves and yeah. they've got Europa League to continue. and I don't think Europa League has as big effect on teams as most people would say but it's still a, an effect and especially for a club with high ambitions they're going to want to put everything into it yeah. they're not going to see it as something like like we were like if we get to the group stages that'd be great we have some away day trips whatever a couple of their ambitions they're like we need to be putting a stamp on this mm. especially like they've attracted big talent but there's been rumours of like Isco and a bunch of other people I've seen this summer there's no chance of getting them unless they're going into your opening group and that's the big thing for them that's what I mean going back to your point about Pellegrini mixing matching up a little bit at the beginning of last season, I put on a personal note, I expected that. That's where I don't think a lot of West Ham fans did. And I finished top ten to me in the first season for a manager. That's a, that's a yeah, yeah I, I would yeah. take that. I would, I would take that. I would take, I would take your yeah, hand off for yeah, that yeah, compared yeah, to the yeah, yeah. previous two seasons in that stadium. But, but, but would you bite your hand off again to have ten again this season? As long as we did well in the patch. That's what I'd like to next year. Yeah, I mean. But we just don't take it seriously. Do I think I mean. we do. I think Pelgrini will learn a lot from the Wimbledon defeat. I think he'll. I think he would have been I embarrassed. So. I think he would have been embarrassed by that. He would have come, he would have come out of that thinking a ball's to suck. The thing the is, though, we had a couple suck. of games in the, the cups this year where we lost it. Yeah, and we got through kind Pelgrini, of lucky. I think Pelgrini, though, is the type of manager to blame his players. I think sometimes previous managers we've had have almost got. Uh, I don't want to use a cliche, but. It's big club mentality. It's, it more, I don't want to say Moyes and Bill's a small club mentality. They sort of did. He got beat. They sort of said, well, what do you expect? You know, we're going to lose games. Pellegrini gets beat. Pellegrini says, it's not good enough. 
No, we've got to beat. 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 We've got to Pellegrini's decision, or do you think that I, was a I, club decision? I think we took it seriously. I think I think we took it seriously. I think we. I think we. Because I don't think Pellegrini would have said. We took it serious. We took that cup serious. I don't know if we did. Pellegrini put out a squad that should have been winning that game easily. That was a fair thing. It wasn't the manager that didn't take it. I think they thought. I think the players come out on that game and thought, we got this in the bag. And they didn't. They they never got into second gear. I think they just. I 100% blame the players. It weren't our first 11. I think so. It doesn't matter. Our first 11, our reserves should be beating that. Our under 23 should be beating that. It's pure. Purely down to underestimating the opponent yeah. on the day. Fact. I, I think as a player, with that team, they played out of their skin and we didn't. That yeah. team that day, their, their, their team was, of, was most of our starting eleven in the Premier League. Wrong or right? I th- well, I think I think for that starting eleven though, put them all on the target to be sold or released by Pellegrini. Perez is gone. Carlos gone. Fernandez is on his way. I don't know who else started. That's what I mean. Players now, Pellegrini looked at them and went, you know what? Who's the Charlton said midfielder that we've just colored? He played as well. He was like Charlton. He was like Charlton. No, he was the, he was in the Carabao. Oh, that was in the Carabao. He got his tooth cut out and kicked out. He said he was at Charlton. He is, he is a child. Yeah, but you just said he was a child. You went the child, but he the child midfielder who was, you know, the one who was playing for it. Yeah, so he, played against, he played against Wimbledon in the Carabao because we played him twice that yeah, year, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, that's, that's what he really 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 two picked out. Them yeah. games are also for the players that are on the bench, like the Perez's, the Hernandez's, Obiangs, Obiangs, to come on and impress and, take and try and take, yeah, take their opportunity, stride in it, and try and get like, a first team regular appearance. And I know Perez came on that game and scored, but. Them, them type of players just don't excite me though. They're not, no. they're not top half players to no. me. But we're, we're not big enough or rich enough to have a team of like yeah. eight. You know what I mean? Like if we don't have a team of Andersons, we can't have that. We have to be. We have to. We can have that. We can have that. We can have that. Not long. This is the last one we're doing. We'll be done in about ten minutes max, and then I'm going to move all the furniture around so it'll be good. Anyway. Uh, let's start wrapping this up. Ash, can West Ham get into the top six? Can I get your final thoughts, please? We can, yes, but I don't think we will. I think we'll just miss out. I'll, I'll say between 7th and 10th. But we've got the potential. No reason why we can't break the top six. No. I think we'll be better than next, last year. I think we could get top eight. And I would probably be happy with it, but... I'm trying to be positive. I just said to be got to be positive. So yeah, I'd like to think we could, but I think we I think we'll finish eight. What's the big reason as to why you say no? What's the biggest number one? Why you say no? Because we're fucking unlucky. Fair enough. I personally think we can break into that top six. We have a more than a good enough squad to do so. However, I don't think we will. For me, it's all about improving on last season, having finishing in that top sort of half of the table and having a cup run, and then looking onto that, mate. If we can, brilliant. Obviously, we on our day we can beat anyone that's proven. So it's just taking it as it comes. And I don't want myself and other fans to expect too much. At the end of the season, we're going to be left disappointed. Expecting and hoping are two different things, though. Yeah. I think that's important for this context of this video. Yeah. Thinking we can get into the top seven, six, hoping we can get in, it's completely different to expecting. You know, Ash just said, yeah, we could, but I bet if I said we're going to finish the 10th next year, he would have said, yeah, that's a good season. You know, it's, it's just not black and white as that either. There's the terms how enjoyable was the football, who did we beat, where did we lose, injuries, there's so much more tangible here. So you don't have to defend yourself too much, but I get what you're saying. Like, yeah, because <laughs> I think if we expect it and we don't get it, we're just yeah. going to be left in the same place where we are currently right now, which is frustrated that we've not, we didn't do it last year. It was kind of like when, when we got into the preliminary rounds with Billy. No one really expected that to happen, no, no. and it happened, so... Yeah, I think we're always hoping. Yeah, I think we're always hoping. Yeah. But, like, yeah, no, I, 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 you can't. We can't take anything for granted. We can't yeah. expect it. Charles, last words. There's a massive opportunity for us. I don't think we will. I think we'll probably miss out for some reason, like you say, injuries or whatever. Um, but I think there's a massive opportunity, and it's the most excited I've been going into a season for a long time. Oh, I, I completely agree with that. 
Uh, I think there's also, this is the first time in, in the summer, I, I'm trying to record it, you can look at the top six and you think, you know what, two or three of these teams can be got at. Yeah. And if you look yeah. at their starting 11 and our starting 11, you sort of think, there's not that much between them anymore. Like before, they used to be like, you look at City and West Ham now, there's, there's a big difference. That used to be like that for all the top... Yeah, originally it was top four, then it was top five, then it was top six, but say top five 15 years ago, whatever, you used to look at West Ham and whoever's in top five, there was a huge gulf in quality. That's near enough gone. We're competing with Arsenal for players now, we're competing with Man United for players. The, the, the transfer market's levelling itself out a little bit. It's no longer about who can attract players, it's all about who can spot the player, yeah, yeah. who can sort of pay the money a little bit. because. I don't think any players out of our reach if we had the cash. Do you know something? We had 100 million. We could probably attract Jaden Sancho at yeah. West Ham. But we just don't have 100 million. So I think we can almost, apart from the world class, the upper tier of players, Neymar, Isco, etc., can't get them. The next level down, I think we can attract them. I'll tell you what, I think we're starting to go for them as well, like for now. So that's, that's I think we're starting to say, you know what? We're having him. You know, Arsenal. What about him? Is number two. Yeah. Who's who's the other big team? Barcelona. It's a case that we've looked at him and gone. Clearly, that's someone we want. He's young, he's impressive, and he's got room to grow. And we're going to go. Okay, we pay big money for him, and we have this yeah. thing. In. It's just a matter of getting it done. But we're looking like we can actually do when that. When Pellegrini arrived, we didn't just get a manager. We just didn't get a philosophy and change the transfer strategy. We got a pair of bollocks. Yeah. West Ham United got a pair of bollocks with Pellegrini. It's almost like Pellegrini said to Solomon, "What are you doing, buying Jordan people? This is West Ham United. You're a Premier League club. What are you doing? You can see out there. You get the next." You know, the next such and such a player, yeah, go out there and find him. Yeah. They're out there. Also, David Sullivan is like, well, the football manager save game. He doesn't look that impressive on it. <laughs> Jordan <laughs> Hugo, however, I've got him. He's doing all right. It's almost like Pelican is torn up everything about West Ham. Oh. He's like, this is all shite. Here's a blueprint on what you do. The Pellegrini, you know, he's gone out of big clubs, he knows what works. He's done it, he's gone into medium sized clubs and taken them into the echelons of big clubs like Malaga. Pellegrini's been there and done that. He would have walked into West Ham and thought, that is shit, that is shit, that is shit, that's small club, small club, small club. The training ground, I've never known a manager at West Ham come in, you know what? But if we failed, if we failed, it would be the owners that would look bad over Pellegrini. That's the thing, so they've been been forced there. That's that's, that's a fair (laughs) point, but I just think going into this, I think we've got so much going for West Ham. I don't fear, I'll be surprised if we finish bottom half next season. I'd be, yeah, surprised I, I, if we're, yeah. we're, I'd be surprised if we're not entertained. I think we're going to be entertained. I think we've almost... I thought for the majority of last season, we were entertained. We were good. Especially for the last point of the season as well, the last after Christmas. Thing That's is, when it started going for you us. Take, you can take West Ham starting 11 last season and, and make two or three changes and you think, next season, you can make, take your starting 11 and make two or three changes and you go, you know what? Still, bloody really damn good team that I fancy this, regardless of who the opposition is. Antonio Yarmolenko, it's 50 50. Doesn't matter who you play, they're bloody good. You know, I'm going at Valbuena, wow, you don't compare Valbuena. Gone, it's a bloody damn and good team. You have to remember, as well, for context, this is recorded whenever we are. Yeah, we could still June. sign Matt We could still is. sign a big striker, we could still oh, sign oh, like there's, there's another left back or whatever to and build even without, more. Without a doubt, you can see the progression is there and it's falling into place. I'll, I'll round this up. Do you know how to know West Ham will progress by the conversation we've just had? Yeah, we've never course. had this exactly, problem. Yeah. Not a chance. No, never I've never would have had no, that. that last last this video yeah. sums up the progress West Ham United have made in the last year. By the way, you guys let us know what you think in the comments below. Do West Ham have what it takes to potentially break into the top six next season? Or is that a close shop or our Wolves, Leicester, Everton or any other club better position than us to do so if an opportunity arises? That's been Ash, that's been Bears, that's been Rofi, that's been Charlie, I've been Joe. We've been Hammer Chat. Thank you for joining us. Join for liking the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new out here and we'll see you in a little bit.